Tips episode 6 I think this is where we're going to be taking a look at lead guitar now I uh, thought the best way of doing this would be just to give you a tour of what I've done on two or three different songs a couple of different approaches just to give you some ideas because a lot of the fundamentals with lead guitar are the same as for rhythm guitar when it comes to heavy metal so check out my video building a layered heavy guitar tone if you need to because a lot of the basics are going to be covered there but obviously there are some different tricks you can use for lead guitar so we'll get on with uh, the first one here this is from my song shadows in a darkened room what i'll do is give you a quick tour of everything that i've done first thing is to look at the guitar sound itself with lead you can you can have a lot more variation than with rhythm guitar i find obviously on an album uh, from a metal band the rhythm guitar sound will not change from one song to the next because the album needs that sound to be solid all the way through to give it the character of the band and of the album very important the rhythm guitars have that strong identity to them at lead guitar you have a lot more flexibility but for this song i'll put a link in the description if you want to hear the whole thing i wanted a lead tone that was quite similar to the rhythm it's sort of when it comes in it follows on from a, a rhythm section quite well and it's almost as if one of the rhythm guitars takes over the lead so i wanted it to be very similar so what i've done is actually used a variation of one of the presets that I gave in that building a layered heavy guitar tone tutorial it's just using uh, the TSE 808 as a boost you can see the settings here I haven't provided a preset for that because obviously that's not required you can see what I've done there very simple I then used the Poulan Legion which is free obviously very very good plug in this now all I changed from the rhythm one is I did change it from mode rhythm to lead which gives it a bit more harshness i raised the drive a bit because you can afford to add a bit more distortion it's usually a single guitar so it can be a bit grittier than than with rhythm if you're layering took out a bit more of the lows added a bit more mid you've got to be careful reducing mids when you're playing solo guitars it would sound very thin otherwise and i added a bit of presence as well but uh, that preset is in a zip file which is available on the building a layered heavy guitar tone video so download it there if you need to that's the basis for my two lead tracks here now what you can see there's two of them and i did a sort of question and answer thing with these look at the lead you can see here the l lead which stands for left lead is panned left 33 and the right is panned right 33 so they're slightly offset from center and it they alternate so that it's a bit more interesting on the ear. So let's have a listen to how this sounds dry. Okay, first thing to note is that I've passed both these two leads through a lead guitar group so that I can process them together. And we can uh, take a look at that now if I bring up the patches for that. Now, um, the first thing always with lead guitar, if I open one of these waveforms, one way it differs from rhythm is that you get more sharp peaks or spikes in the audio. It's a bit more dynamic than a rhythm guitar, which is a lot smoother. Um, I We'll just say what I did was bounce down the Legion and the Le Cab so that I'm working with those files. If I bring up a rhythm guitar though, see how much smoother that one looks. It means that with lead you definitely have to compress. A great one if you've got it is the Renaissance Axe. If you don't have this, you can use a normal compressor. The way this differs is that the ratio is flexible and the more dynamics the higher the ratio to smooth it out. It's a very smooth compressor, really, really good for this kind of thing. Um, if you've got it, definitely use it. If you haven't, you know, a normal vintage style compressor will work quite well, but this is definitely the one I like to use. And that's first in my list, just to even out the, the sound a bit. And all I do is get it playing, bring the threshold down till I see some movement here that's evening it out a bit. As soon as you bring it down so much that you feel it's squashing, you just rain it off a bit again. And then the gain control on the right here, I bring that back down and I reference on and off here 
to bring it down to the same volume it was again before. So we compress it, which tends to raise the volume with this plugin, and then bring it down to its original volume with the gain. So a quick, quick demo, but it's, it's very straightforward. So start up there. Yeah, that'll do. Um, so you can see where I finished up there, it wasn't too different. It just means that a lot of the peaks are smoothed out. So that's an essential first place to start. And if you've got more dynamics in your, your playing, then maybe you will need harsher settings than this. But this is a sort of fairly good good place to start. Attack, just leave on five for lead. It tends to be a good place to, to put it. Moving on from that to some equalization, uh, this might surprise you. I've been very harsh with this. If you take a look at that, that's uh, quite a curve I've created. Two fundamental things. You need to uh, high cut. Whereabouts you do that will vary, but you don't want the really harsh 10 and above for certain. Below that, it depends on your guitar sound, and you may want to experiment so that you don't lose too much brightness, but you definitely want some high cut there. Low cut, even more importantly, your lead guitar must not muddy up the rhythms and because you're adding another guitar sound in the low mids start to pile up on each other and you can see I've even started that at 250 and I noticed a real sort of woofy woolly sound there which is at 213 that I've pulled down to minus 7.6 we'll see what effect that has um, it does make it sound a bit thinner but it's what's required and it does uh, make it sit well in the mix so you'll hear the full mix at the end uh, so don't be too surprised about what I've done here and you will find certainly with the low and the high cut you need to do that yourself with these other extreme cuts that I've been doing here I found with this lead tone um, it may have been my playing but I was getting some plectrum scratching and also some woofiness come through that I really didn't like what I did was created here was an opposite curve I'm going to play you this opposite curve as well so you can see the character of the frequencies that I, I removed so let's give them a listen um, we'll get it playing with this off first To hear that there, that's a very, very sort of harsh, metallic -y kind of sound that I managed to remove there by making that extreme cut. So, with lead, I find it gets very grating on the ears a lot easier than rhythm guitar because you're working one or two octaves higher. So, you do need to take a bit more care with how you're EQing maybe some of those little bits that, that are annoying. A way of doing that to find, you've probably seen this in many other videos, is you just raise, get a very small cue on a frequency, run up and down as this part is playing, and you know that, that will allow you to figure out what, what's making the horrible noises, and you can remove them if you need to. As I say, it might just be a part of the character of the way I play, I don't know, because I, to be honest, I don't really mix other people's music, so I don't have an experience of doing that. So that's what I've done with the EQ on this particular track, it may not have required so much harshness on other tracks if, if other elements of the song were hiding the character, but this song certainly needed it. Okay, now third in the list, I would normally put either a reverb or a delay. You can do both. I tend not to like doing that because of the build-up of mud, but a lot of people do, especially with leads. They like to add both delay and reverb. One thing I love using is a ping-pong delay. The Cubase ping-pong delay is perfectly good, but there is just something special I find about this Waves Super Tap. So if you've got it, please do try messing around with it. It just seems to give a really clear delay. And the setting I use is, uh, I have, as you can see, I've got my main sound in the middle, uh, which is obviously offset slightly left or right, depending on which, which part of my guitar is playing. And then I have a full left and full right, both down by six. The, the right's actually down by a bit more, eight. So they're fully left, fully right, and they happen on the second and the fourth, sort of eighth notes. And then I have a feedback of two. Now, there is a difference between delay and feedback if you're unfamiliar with that. The delay is the initial repetition of the notes. So what I've told it there is you'll get the initial note, one, then a 
two, three, and that would be the delay two, three. Feedback of two means it will repeat that delay twice. So it would go one, two, three, two, three, two, three, maybe. And that's how the sound works. So feedback is how many times the delay will repeat over itself in a decaying fashion. There's also some filters over here, which I do tend to use with this. I like to cut out, as you can see, it's got a wide cue there and it just cuts out some of the high and low frequencies again, so that it doesn't pile up frequencies in the mix you've got to be careful with delays that you're not piling up these frequencies so if you have the option to use filters then it, it can be good and it adds a nice bit of extra character to the sound as well so this i find really fills out the sound of the solo it sounds pretty cool and it uh takes the place of a reverb for me because it's filling out the sound i don't find i need a reverb on top of it with this kind of music so let's have a listen to to how that adds to the to the music Okay, and I, I love the way in particular with delays when you use the whammy bar and stuff, how that, that, that effect works. It just uh, is something I really like. And also, when you're cutting between guitars like I've done in this particular piece, the having the delay at the end really helps merge them together so that it feels like one flowing piece. So something like a delay, really, really good at bulking the sound out, making a bit of interest left and right for the ears, and a really good trick to work with. So I find I use ping pong delay on most of my leads. Okay, and finally, uh, good news for you all. This is a free plugin, IVGI. I'll put a link in the description. They do do commercial products, but they've given this away for free, which is lovely. It's a saturation plugin. And it's really nice. It does what a saturator should do. It just makes that sound. It gives it that extra little something, that analog sparkle, which works really well on distorted lead guitars, adding a bit more bite to it. Uh, it's quite subtle, but I usually, again, this is something I usually add to my lead guitars because it does give them that extra presence without giving them harshness. So let's have a quick, uh, quick listen. Before I press play, just to talk you through this quickly, there's a drive here. The more that goes up, it slowly starts to distort. It uh, gives that gritty sort of tape saturation feel. The output, you always want your output leveling around zero here. Um, that's because it replicates analog gear. You don't want it going much higher. It says that the optimum uh, for the processing is around zero, so that's where you need to keep it. What's good about this one, look at this response option for high frequency or low frequency. You'll see I've angled it slightly towards the low frequency. That's rounded off some more of the high end, taken away some harshness and added some more harmonics in the lower end to really give body to the sound. Asymmetry is just a different way that the harmonics are produced. I can't pretend to understand that fully, but I do know that if you turn that knob round, then you get slightly different sound. That's the as complicated as I'm afraid I can go with that one. So it's uh, definitely worth picking this up. It's free, as I say, and uh, if you haven't got any saturation plugins, then this one is certainly a good one to have. So let's hear uh, how this adds to the character. Okay, a couple of things to note. Firstly, you'll see I peaked at about four there, so I completely ignored my own uh, advice. And secondly was that, if anything, it took off some of the high-end harshness, so it's really good at rounding off, mainly due to this response knob that I used here. So it's a really good fix tool if you think it's a bit harsh, rather than take some EQ out, maybe try this plugin instead, and it works really well. So that's this song complete. Let's have a quick listen to how it sounds in the mix. And I play it back from a bit so you can see what the lead up to the solo is as well. One reason why I kept the uh, guitar sound as it is. Sanity. 